Hi, my name is Paul Nordmark, and my guest tonight is Jeff Buchanan with The Sound of the Final Harvest. And tonight we're going to be uh, discussing what we believe, Jeff and I, is the ultimate um, word that will win, people, win, win people's hearts, that will heal people, and it's love. It's agape. It's the love of the Father, you know. Jesus came to show us what the Father's heart was like, okay? And, of course, he stretched out his arms, and he literally died of an exploded heart through crucifixion on the cross, displaying the ultimate love for his creation that literally he came into this world to become a man so he could be brutally beaten and actually die of a broken heart for his creation so that we could experience his love and experience the love of the Father and be healed and be forgiven and be redeemed yes. through his eternal work on the cross. That, that it's not our righteousness, it's his righteousness that was nailed to the cross for his creation when he said, he said, it is finished. Thank you, Lord. But he also said, Father, you know, into your hands I commend my spirit. But before that, that the Father had to turn his back on Jesus Christ because he took upon himself all of our sins, all of our iniquities, all of our diseases. He took that upon himself so that we in return could have his righteousness, his health, and the God kind of life living in the fruit of the Spirit living in the very nature and character of God. Because what he came to do is give us new birth so that we could have his nature, the love nature. Yes, thank you. The love nature. John the Apostle said, we know we've passed from death unto life. We know we've been born again, in other words, because now we have love in our heart for the brethren. How does somebody know they've been born again? How does someone know they've passed from death unto life? How do they know they've received Jesus Christ into their heart, that they received the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus into their life because now they're born of love. Now they're born of God. God is love. And I'm just going to share a couple scriptures that it says that, that the eyes of Jesus are like flames of fire in the book of Revelation, that it's agape love. It's a strong, burning, hot, glowing tender, compassionate devotion to the well-being of someone. It says our God is a consuming fire of love in Hebrews 12, 29. That literally his, his throne, it says in, in different places of the Old Testament, Ezekiel, the visions they had, they saw the throne of God that was on fire. It was on fire below the throne of God. What is that? Our God is a consuming fire of love. So Jeff, elaborate yes. on the love of the Father. Yes. Elaborate on the love of the Father. Yes, I, I love the fact that at 18 years old, I'm 55 now, but I can remember the moment I encountered the Father's love in my room alone, uh, watching a TV program, Christian program, like you're doing now. Um, and I had an encounter with Father where he entered the room uh, when I say that, just to explain it real quick, it wasn't like he showed up physically, but his presence, I felt him all over the room, in on my body, around my body, coming out of the heavens. I heard his voice, and he spoke to me, and he said, Son, you need to give your life to me tonight fully. And it's interesting, the Father calls me Son while I'm living in a state of sin where I, I have no uh, knowledge of him yet. And yet I felt nothing but love. I didn't feel anger from him that he was mad at me. He was inviting me into a relationship with him so that I could be saved and turn from my sins that I didn't even know that I was involved in because I loved what I was doing in the rock and roll music and the party and all that. I thought that was uh, an okay life. I wasn't killing anybody. I wasn't robbing banks. Um, so I thought that was okay, you know. But I experienced the Father's love, and it attracted me to Him 
because I knew this is what life's really all about. And as you're looking at the cross here in our background and the fire coming down, that's literally what it is. It's the fire of God's love for you and for me that he was so passionate that he sent his son. He, he exploded into the earth with birth. And that birth of Jesus Christ was so that you could be born again, that you can have an experience with God and awake from death because you are dying right now and not even realizing it. You are, every day you take another breath as you're breathing, you're dying. And, but Jesus came to give life. And it says in John 3.16, how powerful this scripture, for this is how much God loved you and I the whole entire world that he gave his one and only unique and begotten son as a gift so now everyone everyone that includes you who believes in him will never perish but instead experience and have everlasting life and i'll never forget paul later in my journey in life as god began to show me part of my ministry was to release the father's love um, how he was explaining to me that this is what the world needs. They need the Father's love. And that he, he told me not too many years ago, he goes, no, no longer tell the people or call them sons of God, even though that's, a, that's an eternal truth. But he said, call them this instead. He said, call them sons of the Father's love. As I'm saying that, I feel emotion behind it because... It's interesting that the father would say that and why he wanted to say it because I, be, I interpreted why he said it. Because a lot of times when we say, well, I'm a son of God, it can elevate my mental state to make me feel like I'm somebody important above what I should be feeling myself as. But as a son, and, and, and though we are, we're, we're sons of God and we have that ability through Jesus Christ, but as being called a son of the father's love, it changes everything. Now I become like daddy's boy and he's picking me up and I'm in his arms and I'm the son of the father's love and he's just so happy that I'm with him. And, and that's what it's really all about. And like Paul was sharing, there's only one way you really can know that you've had this encounter and you're born again because it changes you on the inside. You start loving people you didn't love before. Uh, you start to have love for them and care uh, and want to help them and want to see them set free and heal themselves and deliver. So that, that's true, Paul. That's true. Now it says in the end days, in the last times, that the love of many will wax cold. That literally our heart can become <coughs> hardened. So and the Bible also says that our faith works by love. And that Paul in Corinthians 12, when talking about spiritual gifts, he said that if we don't do these things in love, we're like a, a claiming symbol, making a bunch of noise without the heart of God, without the love of the Father, without the heart of who Jesus is. Um, you see, every miracle, if you look in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, if you look at every miracle that Jesus released as the Father was guiding him through the Spirit, Notice that all of them were done in love and yes. that all of them were done in compassion and that many times they'd come up to Jesus and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. And he would say, what do you want me to do for, for you? And he would, the person would say, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said, receive your sight. You see, that's the heart of the Father. The heart of the Father, if we want to know the will of God, look at how Jesus ministered. Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, including the woman with adult, in adultery. He's just, he restored her, but he did say, go and sin no more. But he said, neither do I condemn you. Because the love of the Savior changed her heart. You see, it says that the, that the goodness of God leads us to repentance. And so what Jeff's talking about in his encounter with the Father is the Father was already calling him in. Come on, 
Son, you've been away from me far long enough. Now come to me. You know, Jesus said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, beaten up by life beaten up by the circumstances that you face every day. Jesus says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Basically, he's saying, come and rest in the finished work that I have accomplished for you. Come and rest in the finished healing. Through, by his stripes, we are made whole. In other words, we are not going to be made whole. We have been made whole. And so you see how the Lord asks us to, to reach out and receive what he's already provided for us through the finished work of the cross. You see on the vertical, you, you see the cross. Jesus came to make us right with God the Father through his sacrifice, shedding his blood that wasn't tainted blood, born of a Virgin Mary. Okay? His blood was the blood of God. He did not have a human father. The blood in my body, the blood in Jeff's body was determined by our dad. Jesus had no human father. He, he shed his blood. It was the blood of God. That's what separates Jesus from all others. Okay, His virgin birth, his resurrection. From He didn't stay in the tomb. He's alive forevermore. Okay, uh, These other leaders... Even Buddha said, before he died, he said, I'm still seeking for the truth and I haven't found it. Come on. Okay? Mohammed said that he didn't even know what the truth was. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes unto the Father but through him. It's his finished work on the cross. He nailed the sins. Our sins were nailed to the cross. Our sicknesses our diseases but what did he come out of the grave with what did he come what when he was raised raised up on the third day he gave us his righteousness he gave us his health he gave us his wholeness he was crushed so that we could be made whole okay so when you look at this cross with the picture imagine the glory of God the the, the glorious resurrection the glory of God was right there when Jesus died it it resurrected him the glory of God brought him up out of the tomb so that we could come up out of our old life and receive all that he has for us as a free gift as a free gift now just imagine if you rejected this free gift this free gift of righteousness of the blood covering over your life of health of eternal provisions for your spirit, soul, mind, and body. Everything you'd ever need in eternity future, Jesus has made provisions for that. But can you imagine the horrible thought in hell where people are separated from the love of the Father. They're separated from the love of Christ. And the thought comes to them, this was free. I couldn't earn it. I couldn't buy it. I couldn't be good enough for it. All I can do is receive it by faith and I didn't do it. That is what makes hell, hell forever. Because you rejected a free gift from God offering himself to us. You know, all other religions in the world, it's what you can do to please him. This faith that we have is the creator did it all for us. And all we can do is receive it by faith. And say thank you. It's like the ten lepers. Only one came back and gave thanks. It's the one that comes back and says thank you Lord for all that you've done for me. Those are the ones that receive from the Lord. The ones that have a thankful heart. Jesus always rejected the people that were self-righteous. He always rejected the people that thought they were better than everybody else. Based upon their holiness or their righteousness. He always had compassion for those that would say... Lord, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. I'm a sinful man. Lord, uh, you know, they had a repentant heart. They, they sat at the feet of Jesus. They were teachable. That's part of being meek. They were meek and they sat at the feet of Jesus. They weren't self-righteous. See, God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. You know, God loves a contrite and humble spirit. And that's when you receive from the Lord. It's not in our haughtiness or thinking that we deserve it. Just like when Peter blew it, he denied the Lord. He repented. It says he went out weeping bitterly. Jesus came to find him, restored him, 
and gave him back double so he could do the work of the Lord because it's Thank the you, goodness Lord. of God that leads, leads yes, us to repentance. Father. It's the love of the Father. So elaborate that on Jeff. Yeah. Uh, yes, so, you know, this in 1 John 4, 10, it said, This is love, that he loved us long before we loved him. It was his love, not ours. He proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering in order to take away all the sins of the entire world. And, you know, as Paul was speaking, you know, when the Spirit of God came into me, I had to make a decision. I said, yes, Lord, okay, I'll give my life to you. And it's interesting that, you know, the Scripture came true. I became born again. How, did I, how do you know that? Because my desires changed. Uh, something that I loved to do, I was willing to quit and destroy the records and tapes and go a whole different direction. And that scripture came true where it says, but it is God who works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And the good news of the gospel is this, that God so loved, so when we give our life to him, he comes in, we become born again. And then it's Christ in the beginning. It's Christ in the middle of your relationship, working it out until you go to heaven or have eternal life forever. And it's Christ in the end. It's uh, My will is involved in the efforts I make, the prayers, the things I'll do to pursue. Yes, we need to press into the heart of the Father. There is a, an action that we take with our own will, but, but it is God. It's, the, it's true where the scripture says, it's not by might nor by power, but it is by my spirit, said the Lord. So we need the Holy Spirit. And we need the Lord to help us. And thank God that he's there to work for us. But I wanted to share this other scripture and share a testimony of an encounter I had that will go in line with what we're talking about today about love and about what's coming on the earth in a fresh and an amazing way. But it says in Romans 5, 8, But Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly, while we were sinners. And I had an encounter back in 2007, I believe it was, when God sent me to the town of Redlands. He said, I'm sending you there for revival. I heard the Father's voice. That's a long story, so I can't get into it. But So he sent me there, and I'm like, I was actually praying to go to a Bible school. Um, of, I believe it was Todd Bentley. I was feeling, but God said, "No, you're going to Redlands for revival." Well, Todd Bentley ends up coming to Redlands. He calls me out, uh, not knowing it was me. But someone's here. God said, "You've been sent here just specifically for revival." <laughs> that's me. That's me. So God confirms things. But I said that to say this: while I was in the town, in the home that God provided for me supernaturally, I got uh, blessed with the home. There's a long story behind that, but God provides when He sends you. And so I had this encounters with some few young people. My son, I believe, was there that day. And we were pressing into God, just praying, worshiping, and seeking God. And all of a sudden, the, you can feel the energy of the room elevate. And then I begin to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And the vision opened up. I'm sitting in the chair. And I'm getting baptized uh, fresh in the Holy Spirit, feeling the tangible presence of God. I go into an encounter, and I begin to see these, I call them waves of, of glory, or, or waves of the Spirit of God, and they were coming uh, onto the land. And I, I specifically, for some reason, saw it on Main Street, Huntington Beach. That's more where I'm from, or, or the town I was from before, and I, I still have my heart in Huntington, but God had me in Redden. So long story short, as these waves begin to uh, uh, roll, they would hit the people and go through their bodies. And I would see the people like this, like because the tangible presence of God went through them. And then they would fall to their knees and cry out with tears, asking, how do I get saved? And I began to see that what it was, they were so encountering the love of God, they experienced it. It went through their being that it literally melted them like this fire coming down from heaven. The fiery, pure, tender love of the Father that is crying out for sons and daughters. Come home, come home. And I said that to say this. He said, that's coming in these last days. We're, we're, I believe, at the verge of it. It's already beginning to take place. There's things happening, but it's about to explode on the earth. And I really believe what's coming is a fresh, over on the whole 
whole earth. That the whole earth is going to be filled with the glory of God like the waters come into the sea. And I had an encounter like that just the other night. I was telling, talking to, to Paul about it just before the show started. And I think that's what started this whole thing was talking about love. So I had a dream the other night. And in the dream... Um, I was at a meeting in a, in a church building of some sort, and the minister, prophetess or whatever, was going to call me out, but all of a sudden, I felt the power of God come on me, and I started to float, literally, off the ground. But like I was like, going to go down like this, but then I floated. And I, I realized there's something about this. There's, there's things we're not tapping into that God's given us the ability to do. And it kind of caused the church to awake that there's, there's more available to us that we're not tapping into the power of God. But, but understand one thing. Before power comes, there must be love. The song got it right. More love, more power, then more you, Lord. So the love told me about that. Don't seek the power. Seek the love. The power will follow because of the love. It's all about love, First Corinthians 13. So just to close with this, in the encounter, as I was floating up to him, the power of God filling the room, people were being wild. What's going on? Yes. And, and it began to get them to inquire, what is God doing and what does he want to do? And as I began to come back down, I felt, they were like, Jeff, what is it? They go, Jeff, what is coming? What is coming? And I said, oh my God. People, it's this simple. Here's what's coming. I go, love is coming. <laughs> love is coming. Literally, the power of heart to melt in His presence. Because when you have a counter with God's love, it will change you. So I really believe this last outpouring of great awakening harvest for the earth it's going to be the love of God that people are going to tangibly experience God's love that it's literally going to cause them to weep to repentance and get saved Amen. that's what I, that dream confirmed that just the other night Amen. you know people that have had encounters with Jesus Christ they say there's so much love coming off of him that yeah. you can't stand up that the, the, the love coming off of him because he is love uh, knocks you down like if you're standing in the ocean and you get hit by a strong wave. It's the wave of his love. And so even in spiritual gifts, you know, gifts of healings, workings of miracles. Think of the story of the widow in the Gospels when Jesus was walking up in the town of Nain and he came up upon a funeral procession. And the, the text says that he was moved with so much compassion, overflowing love. Okay, this is agape, that he went over to the casket because this woman had lost her only son. And before that, she lost her husband to death too. And basically, Jesus felt her loss. He felt her pain. He felt this what she was going through and because of this compassion this agape love this strong fiery hot tender compassionate devotion to the well-being of someone he went over and he raised up he said laddie rise up oh, and it says yes, he Lord. gave her son back to her okay he knows your pain he's been there He's, he had to become a man so he could be our mediator, so he could stand before God the Father and represent mankind. He was tempted in all ways as we are. He experienced the things we experienced. So he became a man so he could re represent mankind before God because he was slaughtered Thank for you. mankind. He knows what it is to suffer to the utmost extreme. You know, through crucifixion, through the cattails, through being shredded like a lamb going to the slaughter. It says he ever lives to make intercession for us before God the Father. Just like before Peter was going to have his fall, Jesus said, I have prayed for you, Peter, that when you come back to me, strengthen your brothers. Be the rock of the church that I've called you to be. Be the man of God I see you to be before you're there. You're going to be the rock of the church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. Jesus sees you and me as he sees us before we're there. Because he wrote about our life 
as the architect of our life before we are born. Just mm -hmm. like he said, before he, Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you and I called you to be a prophet unto the nations. Okay, Jeremiah still had a free will. We have a free will. All of us can choose every day when we wake up. Are we going to walk in love? You know, love works no ill to its neighbor. Well, love believes yes, the yes. best. You know, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, Love is very patient. Love is kind. Love is never jealous. It's never envious. It's never rude or boastful or proud. It's never haughty or selfish. Love does not demand its own way. Okay, it is not irritable or touchy. It is. It doesn't hold grudges and bitterness and hardly even notices when someone does wrong. Okay, it's never glad about injustice. It's never glad about unrighteousness. Okay, it rejoices in the truth. Okay, when the truth wins out, it says, okay, if you love someone, you will be loyal to him. Jesus will stand closer than a brother. When everyone else leaves, he's still standing. That's also the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the one that stands with you when everyone else vanishes. He will be there to defend you. He will be there to stand with you. Okay? It says that he will always be loyal no matter what the cost. Okay? He will always believe in you. He will always expect the best in you because he sees the best in you even before it comes and always will stand your ground in defending us okay jesus is our he's like our attorney before god he he's our he, he took our place and so he represents us that's why he says when you re received me and you confessed me before my father and you're not ashamed of me he said, I will not be ashamed of you and I will confess your name before my father and before the angels that I've assigned to your life that watch everything that you do. They watch everything that all of us do. An angel that's assigned to our life, he said, I will pronounce your name before my father and before your angels Come that on. you are mine Come because on. you stood up for me in this earth. You walked in my love. You walked in my forgiveness. And so we've all been forgiven by God if you've received that. So now we can forgive our, the other people on the horizontal. That's why Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, He said, If we don't forgive others their trespasses, neither will our Father and forgive and forgive our Father in heaven will forgive us. This is why he said, when we stand praying, release people, forgive, that my Father will hear your prayer. And so it's all about the cross. That's what we've been talking about. The love of the Father, the cross. You know, when Jesus opened his arms and he, he, he's basically saying, I've made a way for you to come to my Father. Through my death, burial, and resurrection, I've made the way. I've made the way for me to receive you based upon not your own efforts, but my own efforts. Okay, I've made a way for you to come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy, to get to know the Father, to get to know His love, to get to know His heart. It will change you forever. That maybe you had a dad in this life that was always angry at you, an earthly dad. Maybe you had a dad that didn't show you love. Maybe you had a dad that you could never please or never measure up to. But we have a dad in heaven, Abba. We have a daddy in heaven that's waiting for open arms. Just like Jeff said, that's what he pronounces when he does worship. He reveals the heart of the Father. The Father's love is open. The blast, the sound of the final harvest is really the blast of God's eternal love to mankind. That that's what will change people. That's what will be the great, greatest miracles. It's not how much you can believe God. It's how much you can receive His love. Yes, yes. You see, if you take your, your faith and you actually switch it over to say, I just receive what you've done for me, Lord. Because I'm human. I just receive what you did for me. That's when the greatest miracles will occur in your life. When it's not about how great we are 
or how great we can believe. It's how much we can receive the love of the Father. Like, I just receive all that you have for me, Lord. Everything you've done for me in Jesus Christ, Father, I just receive it. I just receive it. I thank you for it. I thank you that it's mine, that I am a son or a daughter of the Most High God yes. based upon the finished yes. work thank of the cross. Father. Jesus took thank care of our sins. Jesus. He nailed them to the cross. His nail holes are in his wrist or hands, wherever it is, for our eternal remembrance that he nailed our sins to the cross. They're forever taken care of. They're forever dealt with. Jeff, elaborate on that because that's powerful. Yeah, you know, just speaking, um, getting the vision of, of the power of God's love that operates through us when we just allow him to do it. You know, I don't know about you, but there's, because I've encountered God's love the way I have and, and through my life, the different uh, supernatural encounters I've had, I crave for Him. So if I'm not feeling His love, if I'm not feeling it in a room or, or an atmosphere or, or in, in a season of my life, it's almost like I'm deep underwater and I got to launch to the top as quick as possible so I can get air. And there's something on that, and I think we're gonna, I'm going to probably talk about it in my show later, of getting something from the Lord that's an important vision that I'm going to elaborate on. But think about that. We need the love of God more than our air that we breathe, more than our heart that's beating to try to stay alive. Because the love of God is what causes all life to be. But I said that to say this, um, you know, think about a, a power boat or a jet boat. Or like, I've had fast cars, the car I'm driving now has pretty good horsepower. And it's pretty interesting that I'll be tired in the morning sometimes, trying to go to work, right? I don't have much energy. Thank God I'm not having to walk or try to run to get there on time. All I have to do is press on that gas pedal. My God, does that thing just take off. And it didn't took much effort at all because the power is already there in the engine. Uh, there's little buttons I can push. I push the power button for sport and all of a sudden, and it goes into this extra gear and it propels me by just pushing a button. Think about that. That's just a car. Here we have, we're the vehicle. Holy Ghost is the power. That's why Jesus said, don't go anywhere until you receive power. And so the power is God's love that gets, I believe, infused into us like an explosion. Like you're seeing that fire coming down upon the cross. And that was the power of God's love exploding in the earth saying, I have to have my sons and daughters back. I cannot lose them forever. But I said that to say this. Truly the Christian life, Christ-like life, or living as a son of the Father's love, a son of God, should be effortless in some sense of the word. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I press into Him, but it's really Him pressing into me and then causing that explosion of His love. That, that He gives me His heart, His motives, and it becomes effortless just to simply follow. So it's not something I'm trying to do or on my own or in, increase the power on my own. I just push the button. I step on the pedal. It's already in here. The engine's there. The Holy Spirit. So I don't know. I just felt that like there's something on that. And we're going to elaborate on the other show later. But just something I think we're going to yeah. talk about. Yeah. So Jesus said that all <coughs> men will know you're my disciples. Not by your gifts. Not if you call yourself an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, or whatever. He said, all men will know you're my disciples if yes. you have love one for another. That if we forget love, then we might as well just forget it because we're not revealing the heart of who God is. We're not revealing the most important thing in the scriptures. Paul said that there's three. Faith, hope, and love. Right. And he says the greatest of these is love. Right. So let's all be... Focused on love, and you will see miracles. Be focused on love, receive love, you re will receive what you need from the Lord. Yes. His hand will move on your behalf. Not based on how great you are or how great we think we are, but how great His love is for us. It's all Thank about you. Him. It's all about His love. It's all about the name that's above every name. He said, if I will be lifted up, 
that I will be drawn all men unto myself. Thank you. What draws people? His love. When he opened up his arms on that cross and he gave his all for every one of us so we could have his love. Amen. So until next time, remember that the greatest thing in our Christian walk is Jesus said, we need to love one another you, as he loved us. Yes, Lord, pour your love on your people.